Thank you. The tree as a colony. Funny uh, sort of approach. I want to show you that most of the trees, but not all of them, are colonies. And therefore, we have to consider two kinds of trees, the unitarian and the colonial. Primitive trees are unitarian, and modern trees are colonial, or I would use the word reiterated trees. First, let me remind you that tree architecture are genetic programs of growth and development. Here you have six of them, six out of 24 at the world level. In, in uh, Holtum, on the left, you have only one shoot, no branches. Its growth is limited by apical flowering, limited by death. This is called the monocarpic trees, and um, you have several palms, and uh, some bromeliads, and many species. In B, um, on the right, you have only one shoot, but the growth is unlimited because sexuality, because flowering is lateral. This is called um, coroner's model. And here you have thousands and thousands of specimens, including palms, carica papaya, and so on. In C, in the middle on the left, you have branched trees with rhythmic growth and rhythmic branching. The branches grow vertically and flowering is lateral. This is called Rao's model. And you have a lot of trees, pines, oaks, poplar, hevea, the the trees that produce caoutchouc yeah, for the plains, for the tires of the plains, and, um, well, many of them. They, in the middle um, on the right, it's about the same, a branch of tree having rhythmic growth and rhythmic branching, but the branches are horizontal. This is called Massart's model. Massart was a guy from Belgium. You have, for instance, the fir, abies. You have the nutmeg tree in the tropics. And you have also Araucaria heterophylla and more than 100 of, of examples. E, um, at the base, at the left, all the shoots are vertically growing. Flowering is apical. This has been called Lewenberg's model. Uh, Lewenberg was a colleague in the Netherlands. The lilac, cassava, frangipani, nirium, plumeria, and so on. F, uh, the last one uh, is very strange. This is called Troll's model. The seed germinates and it produces an horizontal leafy shoot. You have the germination in the middle. After leaf loss, the base of this first shoot gets erected. And therefore, there is a curve between the vertical base and the horizontal leafy, leafy top. Of course, in the curve, a new shoot is growing. And the adult trees, the adult tree is a superposition of curved uh, shoots. The beech, the elm, 
the Linden, and a lot of Fabassi, for instance, Bohemia, or the rain tree, the famous rain tree of the tropics, belong to this Trolls model. That's enough, out of 24. Now, reiteration is a key concept. Reiteration is a repetition of the genetic program of growth and development. It, I mean, it's a repetition of one of these six models. Reiteration was discovered in 1978 by my friend and colleague, Rulof Albert Arndt Oldeman, University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, he passed by two years ago. Well, without reiteration, a tree conforms itself to only one copy of the architectural model. And it is called unitarian tree. Um, I think in the old books in English, they are also called excurrent trees, but I am not sure. Anyway, they are primitive. Most of them are fossils. And they date back to late Jurassic. If you do paleobotany, you will have a majority of unitarian trees. They are very beautiful, and they are much used as ornamental. For instance, palms, araucaria, frangipani, pandanus, fir, many ornamental trees are ornamental just because they are uh, unitarian. But they are weak. They are short-lived, and they are vulnerable. Why is that, is that so? During their lifetime, they cannot increase very much their photosynthetic performances because their silhouette remains the same. So they cannot increase very much their photosynthetic performances, and that's why you, that's why we can call them primitive. Reiteration in a tree means repetition of, the, of its architecture. By waking up the resting buds, the tree produces new copies of its architecture, that is to say, new trees. A tree produces a new tree. If a new tree go on top of, if new trees grow on top of each other, the reiterated tree becomes a colony, a colony of trees. Reiterated trees are modern and more, much more recent than the Cretaceous. Modern trees are long-lived. They can stay alive for more than 1,000 year, years and much more sometimes. Ah, this is very important. This is very common. It's an, uh, how do you call it in English? An, an old oak, Quercus ilex. And when, it is, when the trunk is in full sun, you have this sort of small plant growing. How, how to be sure that this is a tree and not a branch? It's very easy. You remove the soft part at the base, and you will find the root system. It's not very deep. The root system in uh, in the part most, uh, where is the most water uh, around the cambium. In English, they say sucker. In French, we say gourmand. 
in uh, Spanish, chupon. It's also someone who eat a lot. In Italian, succione. The nice one, nice word. Those are the root system of reiteration. The tree, the original tree was leaning and it produces reiteration vertically growing. It's the same in this piece of wood. The, the large piece of wood should be leaning and the reiteration is vertical. Well, uh, in some plants, the, the root system is quite visible with um, roots isolated from each other. This is an example is, which is circulating. But in many trees, particularly in Europe, the root system is fused and it constitutes a part of the tree ring. Part of the annual ring. Um, the reiteration have two different origins. They, can, they are either traumatic or adaptive. This is traumatic because the original trees was leaning due to wind, for instance. And the reiteration is vertical. Even like this, without removing the soft tissue, you can see the, the root system. They can also be adaptive. Oh no, this is traumatic on a stump, on a fallen trunk in the middle, and on the trunk of a leaning tree. This is a reaction against the traumatism. But reiteration mainly appears by, just by adaptation. Adaptive reiteration. When the tree grows, it receives more and more energy and the response is producing more and more reiteration. Then reiteration becomes more and more numerous. They get more and more numerous, but they get also smaller and smaller. An important point is that the apical meristem stem of the first shoot of this tree is dead due to competition with strong reiteration. If it is dead, the wood rings are no longer produced by the growth of the first shoot because it cannot grow anymore. They are, the, the rings are produced by the growth of reiteration, a swarm of reiteration. Let me show you that we have, um, we have three sort of three kinds of colonies. No, no, this is just to show you that it's exactly, exactly the same mechanism either in a temperate country like, like Europe on the left and uh, in the tropics like the Meranti on the right. It's exactly the same. It's, yes, it's the same mechanism, but for ecological reason, it's much easier to observe the reiteration in the humid tropics. Three sort of colonies. On the left, any tree, any tree of Europe, for instance. On the right, an olive tree. 
2,000 years old in uh, southern Europe. And uh, uh, at the base on the right, a fantastic tree uh, in uh, Kew Garden near London. A large piece of land, and uh, it's, a, it's a quercus, it's an oak. This oak has never been pruned, never. So the, branch, the low branches are longer and longer, and they touch the soil, they produce roots, and they produce also a new oak. So and the, the phenomenon is repeating itself. This, this tree is fantastic. It, it is worth the visit to Kew Garden just for this tree. It's a clone, but it's also a tree because it comes out from only one seed, long time ago. This also is very strange. Typical of the trees we are having in the humid tropics, a banyan tree, a banyan ficus, fig tree. Every reiteration produces its own root system in red, but later on, this root system become, becomes trunks, real trunks. Be careful, a trunk is mainly made of root system. Not only here, I mean in any tr modern tree. I give you now some example of reiterated tree. Mm, sorry, I prefer reiterated better than colonial. I don't like very much colonies. This is in Amazon, possibly um, a member of the Clusiaceae. It's only one tree, and I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine trunks. So this is the beginning of a colony. This is, a, this is in East Africa. This is a young Ramnase. The, the name is not important. This is the young one, about uh, two meters high. And look at the adult of the same tree. Every black dot on this picture is equivalent to the young. So the reiteration on this big tree, there are hundreds and thousands, and even hundreds of thousands. Also, we comment on, on the genome. We have genomic uh, information about such big trees. In the same clone, there is a genomic variation from a reiteration to another one. This has been shown by Muravsky, United States, about 15 years ago. Coradini in uh, Canada, and Kramer in France. So it's well known now, a big modern tree doesn't have only one genome, but it's, it's a colony of reiteration, and it is also a colony of genotype. Look at my Photinia, just in front of my house in Montpellier. This is in uh, early spring. You have one square meter of the Photinia, which is flowering, but not the rest. 15 days later, it's like this. This can be, um, it is possibly 
most possibly due to a genetic variation in this particular uh, part of the, of the crown. Well, a modern tree is a colony of reiteration and also a colony of genotype. If you are interested in zoology, you have an equivalent in zoology, in marine, marine zoology. The equivalent of a unitarian tree would be, for instance, a sea anemone. They are rather big, but they are alone, single, unitarian. And the equivalent of a reiterated tree would be the coral reef, a huge construction with hundreds of thousands of small polyps. It's, a, it's exactly the same with the tree. So reiteration is not restricted to trees. Reiteration is something, something which is linked with fixed life that cannot move. Thank you very much. What, what is for you the main challenge for arboriculture in Europe or worldwide? How does arboriculture have to change in the future yeah, yeah, yeah. to do better things for trees? My idea is that there is a, a huge number of trees that uh, people in arboriculture don't know. Mm -hmm. So they cannot use them because they just don't know them. Um, the, the species that we could use are in the temperate regions like Europe mm -hmm. or North America, but in the tropic also, there is a large um, um, lack of knowledge about the tree worldwide. Mm -hmm. We always use the same yeah, exactly. 23 species. And a small <laughs> number of species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And probably, especially with climate change, uh, we should uh, expand. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. You know, these trees in the modern environment, like here in the city, what do, would you consider the, the largest threat for these trees? Well, uh, my knowledge of European arboriculture is so small Many people in arboriculture don't know that uh, there is several genomes in one tree. Mm -hmm. This is a, a reason to be optimistic. Okay. Darwin would love to, but he didn't know about genetics, but yeah, yeah. the variability is already inside the tree, yeah, the yeah. tree itself. Yeah. yeah. So they will survive us, the trees. Ah, certainly. <laughs> you have started in the 60s and 70s of last uh, century with your career, what, what has changed in, in, in the way we look at trees or in arboriculture for the good or for the bad? I have both good and bad. Okay. Uh, good is the deep interest of uh, public in trees mm -hmm. and forest. When I was a young researcher, Nobody was interested. You, you organize a conference on three, 15, person, 15 <laughs> people. Yeah. But now you have to add chairs. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. The, the, very important. Right, uh, look at the media, the films, the, the, the movies, the books, the journal, the magazine, and so yeah. on. They all have at least a paper on trees or yeah, and right, forest. Right. This, this is very good. And what has changed for the bat since he started? Destruction of the forest. Mm -hmm. This is terrible. Particularly Southeast Asia and um, Papua New Guinea. Yeah. yeah. Those forests in Papua New Guinea are poorly known. They are, they are places mm -hmm. where a botanist has never been walking and they are destroying the, the forest of Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is a place in the tropics where the ex exportation of wood is the largest. Okay. And for sure, the cut trees having no name. You know, talking, talking about the start of your career in the 60s and 70s, you are considered to be 
one of the, the godfathers of tree architecture. So why should we all learn more about this, this topic? What can it contribute to the way we look at trees? How can you use a tree in a city without knowing its genome, mm -hmm. its genetic activity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Architecture is just the genetic yeah. expression. There's a lot of people that may question themselves, why do we need to, to look into this? We understand trees? No. <laughs> Definitely not. So without our tree architecture, you don't really understand what's At happening. the very beginning, tree architecture was a solution to identify the tree. Yeah. Because um, I cannot collect the flowers. Mm. I know there are flowers, but they are 60 meters yeah. above my head. Yeah. So I just think it's not possible to, yeah. to put a name of, on a tropical tree. Yeah. And I remember the chief of an um, African village, I said, chief, how do, you, uh, how do you call the big tree? He says, it's a tiama. And I said, chief, how do you know it's a tiama? Have you seen the flowers? <laughs> <laughs> he was laughing because he said, flowers of Tiama, I don't care. Je m'en fous. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it's that. Yeah, he sees <laughs> the, the silhouette. Yeah. And uh, we went together to the forest and he showed me a lot of young trees, about two, three meters high. And they were very distinct, very different from each other. Mm -hmm. This is a real solution to identify trees in the tropics. And that, that's what started the thinking. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But nowadays, it's, I don't think it, it is interesting for you. There is no problem of tree identification. But in the tropics, yes. Yeah. But today, maybe the interest is more in the way we use them and have to prune them and understand them, like you say. If we don't know about their architecture... Pruning a tree without knowing its architecture it's like uh, a medical people uh, <laughs> opening a human body without knowing the anatomy. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic way to, uh, to describe it. I'm completely convinced. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your insights and for this no, uh, short interview. <laughs> thank you.